speaking today about future human tree relationships. I imagine a time when not only humans relate respectfully to one another, both personally and systemically, but when we can relate respectfully to non human beings as well. Trees are often both older and larger than human beings. In the West, trees are seen as only resource in the form of board feed or part of a beautiful green landscape. Rarely are trees seen in their own terms as valuable beings. As part of the environmental crisis, deforestation continues to be a critical issue and is entangled with climate change and species extinction. Over the last 70 years, deforestation has rapidly increased worldwide, particularly in the tropics. In the 2015 United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization's Global Forest Resources Survey Report, which is the most recent that we have, we're awaiting the 2020 report now, um, the survey reports a net loss of 3.3 million hectares, which is an area about the size of Maryland each year since 2010. So just to highlight that, that's um, a net loss. So we're actually losing more forest than that, but we're also seeing reforestation and afforestation as well. Um, and that's the size, we're losing forest the size of Maryland every single year. And that actually is down from the peak of forest loss in the 1980s and 1990s. South America, Africa, and Southeast Asia have had and continue to experience the majority of contemporary forest loss. So drivers for this loss include expanding agricultural lands, increasing ranching and pastures, gathering fuel wood, logging, as well as international trade. The Food and Agricultural Organization's State of the World's Forest Report in 2016 highlights and notes that tropical deforestation reflects the legacy of colonialism in many countries. Though deforestation continues, forests provide many positive benefits. Forests are carbon sinks affecting climate change, they're the source of livelihoods for people around the world, and they're habitat for innumerable species. Research in the United States has shown that the presence of trees has been found to help reduce respiratory issues, it's been found to help surgery patients recover more quickly, and walking in the roads helps reduce stress as well as mental illness and depression. So trees and forests are associated overall with human, non-human, and planetary health and well-being. So protecting trees and forests is planet-wide is worth it for many, many reasons. Trees are central figures in the history of the West. And while I'm not able to expand on the details of how trees feature in the Western psyche, um, the, the English word tree comes from the Indo-European root deru, meaning firm, solid, or steadfast, with a sense of wood. Through this root, the word tree is connected to words like betroth and duration, duress, endure, um, true, and trust. And the Latin silva and materia, which gives us our word matter, are also connected to wood and trees. So just to give a little bit of a sense of how um, deeply that's embedded in the Western psyche. And I'm talking about um, an inquiry about respecting trees. And the term respect, etymologically, means to observe again. And my work is coming from the Western paradigm, which is my own lineage as an American of European descent um, living here on occupied territory. Uh, and my work seeks to observe trees again using a phenomenological perspective looking to temporarily withhold my preconceptions and judgments to experience a tree as if anew. And in this work, I've spent a lot of time in the, in the forest local to the California Bay Area, reflecting on my experience of trees um, to better understand them on their own terms. And the Western view of trees and plants stems primarily from the work of both Plato and Aristotle, which in their theory of soul held that vegetable soul is inferior to both animal and human soul. And this view has been maintained with little change in the present, with uh, many philosophers throughout history barely even addressing plant ontology at all, just kind of taking what Plato and Aristotle said as, um, as the right thing and moving it forward. But with our deepening environmental crisis, it's time to evaluate trees and plants and our relationships to them. Much work in the last 15 years or so in both biology and philosophy supports this view. <coughs> Scientists and researchers have begun to work on plant behavior, signaling, and communication, finding that plants exhibit memory, learning, and intelligence. Forests have complex communication networks. These are mycorrhizal networks, so connections between mushrooms and forests, um, which are researched by Suzanne Simard. Um, and she's actually been doing this work since the 90s. You might um, have heard of it as the Wood Wide Web. Um, 
Plants such as the pea plant exhibit what's called in the scientific literature self-non-self -self discrimination. So this actually means that the plants can differentiate between their own roots and the roots of another plant. So they actually compete differently when they know um, when, when the roots are, I want to be careful about my language, <laughs> I don't want to say, no, um, but, but they can differentiate between their own roots and the roots of another plant and adjust their competition. So they won't compete as um, strenuously with when they know that the, the roots have their <laughs> own. It's hard not to use anthropocentric language yeah. <laughs> with this uh, topic. Um, but the, the roots are sh both shorter and, um, uh, and, and they grow. Um, and that's the research of Omar Falak and, and team. Monica Galliano is a scientist and interdisciplinary thinker, and she focuses on learning and memory, particularly with Mimosa pudica, which is the shy plant. And it actually closes its leaves immediately when touched. So it kind of closes its leaves like this when touched. And she um, showed that the plants learn by showing that a small drop after some time is not threatening to the plant by leaving its leaves open. Most incredibly, several plants, inclu including both the pea plant and the shy plant, have been found to lose movement when exposed to anesthetics through their leaves or through the work, their roots, which is the work of Ken Yukawa and team. And in the scientific literature, they actually note that the plant loses consciousness. The scientific community has argued over terminology, such as plant intelligence, plant cognition, even plant neuroscience and plant consciousness. But the generally acceptable terms at this point are plant signaling and behavior. In parallel work, philosophers in the field of critical plant studies have also advocated for rethinking the place of plants over the last decade. Some philosophers have advocated for plant personhood, including Matthew Hall, who draws on indigenous, Buddhist, Hindu, Jain, and pagan religious worldviews for his argument. Hall uses the terminology other than human persons and argues for moral consideration for plants based on this. The most prominent critical plant studies thinker, Michael Martyr, argues for what he calls a vegetal anti-metaphysics, stemming primarily from Western philosophy. Martyr critiques both Aristotelian and post-Kantian metaphysics, finding plants in their being so different from human being, leads to an anti-metaphysics, what he calls a living reversal of metaphysics. However, Martyr maintains that plants are unresponsive, which is contradicted by the scientific studies that I just mentioned. And he also argues that eating may be inherently unethical, so I agree that studying trees and plant livingness requires rethinking being in the Western paradigm, both plant being and human being. Contrary to Martyr, my research um, has led me to propose a lush metaphysic based on an ontology that values trees and plants as relational, intelligent, and agential beings. This ontology is not hierarchical, like that of Plato and Aristotle, though it affirms the expansive difference between ourselves and trees and plants. The science gives a foundation for this claim, though much more research is needed. And seeing trees again points towards an ontology that is more complex than we in the West have imagined. A veritable metaphysics such as this values trees and plants differently, but similarly to other beings. So that brings me to the question, how can we relate ethically to trees and plants? Or what would a world in which trees and plants are respected look like? So let me start with an example. Master woodworker George Nakashima called his work creating furniture from trees the second life of a tree. The tree's first life is in the forest, among the goings on of existence, rooted in the ground, and connected into the forest ecology. The tree's second life, what Nakashima calls an immortal life, is one of artwork, practical and functional, for the humans that welcome the trees into their lives. In his process, Nakashima took pains to choose the correct trees near his studio in New Hope, Pennsylvania, which I think is nice. Pennsylvania is Penn's wood, so New Hope, Pennsylvania. Um, carefully, Nakashima was carefully felling them, preparing wood in traditional ways, stemming from his European, Japanese, and American training, and he sought to unveil the beauty within the wood. His final furniture pieces are exquisite examples of how a tree can become immortal. These pieces are made to be treasured for generations functional expression of an art, which is a human and tree co-creation. Though Nakashima has passed away, his legacy continues through the woodworking studio he created, and which has continued to work with trees in Pennsylvania, using his process to create pieces, as well as a nonprofit foundation. So, of course, looking at trees and plants again will bring up unique ethical issues. 
Trees and plants are uniquely problematic. Um, with animals, we can make the argument that we should stop eating animals or using animal products, but this isn't possible with plants. Uh, we must take plant life for our livelihoods. As Alfred North Whitehead has said, life is robbery, but the robber requires justification. Even something like a fruitarian stance, only eating fruits and nuts that don't kill the tree itself, doesn't take into account building materials or fuel wood um, used around the world. We must take trees and plants in some way for our livelihoods. I do not agree with Michael Martyr that eating is inherently unethical. <laughs> Vegetal value calls for an ethic that takes into account the needs of trees and plants in the forest, as well as our human interconnections, while also justifying the need to depend on them for our livelihoods. And I want to be careful um, to say that we in the West um, need not develop wholly novel ethical approaches towards future tree human tree relationships. I, I believe that Western thinkers can respectfully and non appropriately find insights and advice from other cultures with differing relationships to plants and other non humans. So, some of these um, philosophies may include some indigenous traditions, um, religious or animistic systems, as well as traditions of the West's own deep past, such as paganism. And because I'm not a scholar of these traditions, I would point in anyone interested in these sources to, um, to someone, to sources directly coming from those communities or scholars of those communities. So I can imagine a world where trees are taken locally and carefully, the wood treasured and cared for during the process of making, and the end product passed through generations, almost as a loved family member. In this world, not only do we in the West give attention to whether wooden pieces have a sustainability certification, like that of the Forest Stewardship Council, but also the same to all of our products deriving from trees. And there are so, so many. And our foods, our medications, but also things like books, toothpaste, the cork, bottle corks, um, among many, many, many others. And it really is a globally interconnected system with the forests um, and our everyday lives. And um, in this world, I imagine trees themselves are recognized as ontologically valuable members of the Earth's community. So, thank you. <laughs>